as above, so below is uh, apparently the the first rule of magic, and it, it basically means as I believe the world to be, so it is. You know, the the things that are going on inside of me are the things that I'm finding outside of me, and uh, and you know, it's the first uh, first law of magic. Apparently, like there's something uh, I don't know, really beautiful in that, and uh, we, we we love the idea of somebody searching for something that they realize is is not so much outside of themselves as they initially anticipated. Well, Drew and I had always, uh, we'd always talked about like, wouldn't it be cool to do a kind of Indiana Jones type movie with a female lead and, uh, you know, something that's like adventurous and uh, has like, you know, epic scale, but to, told in a really personal, like, um, like finite, you know, from a very personal and finite uh, viewpoint. And uh, so we had this character, Scarlett Marlowe, is sort of our fearless, uh, you know, female archaeologist. And, uh, and yet we didn't really have a setting or we didn't really have the pieces. And then uh, we got a call from Thomas Tall saying, I'd love to do something in the Paris catacombs. And it was like a light bulb went off. We we're like, you know, we had previously studied the catacombs, but never in conjunction with this. And and so we brought in this idea to him and pitched it, and he said, let's do it right now. We were seeing, like, you know, real, you know, like skulls and femurs. I mean, it was, it was pretty crazy. And, uh, and we were army crawling under giant rock um, formations. And, I mean, it, it, was, it was genuinely scary. And one of, one of the people started, uh, like, losing it. And we, we had this, like... Oh, this is how the movie should feel. It should it should have this kind of uh, intensity because it's it's really a nightmare world. We have to we have to find a way. I know it's going to be horrible. I know it's going to be difficult, but you know we can stay stay you know gorilla. We can stay small. Um, but there you know there's no electricity down there. There's no restrooms down there. There's no. Um, you know, cell phones and walkie-talkies don't work. Uh, you have nothing down there. And, uh, and so there was this feeling of like, you know, think we can convince uh, Legendary to let us go do this uh, in the catacombs? And, and Legendary is awesome. They're, they're so cool. They just got behind us and they're like, yeah, let's do the real thing. And, and uh, we were actually the first production ever to get permission to shoot in the off-limits areas of the catacombs and the first production ever to shoot in the uh, public catacombs. For the role of Scarlet, we really wanted somebody who is not only someone who you'd love to take a road trip with or, you know, go see a, a baseball game with, but uh, somebody who you believe could be, you know, smart to the point of genius, um, could also be funny. Um, we, you know, we wanted so many different facets to that character that, I mean, we probably read 300 people. We searched... Uh, Los Angeles, we searched Paris, we searched London, and we found uh, Perdita out of London. And, uh, and it was actually funny. She had submitted two uh, auditions, and Drew and I are usually in sync with stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, I, there's this, this blonde woman who is awesome. She's totally the character. And Drew said, oh, no, no, I found this, this brunette woman who's perfect. And, and we were arguing, and then we realized it's the same person. It was, it was Perdita, like, and both of us had found her separately, you know, in a, in a different perform, in a different take. And um, she really is. We, we didn't want to just, uh, like, take a pretty girl and put glasses on her. We wanted somebody who really feels uh, like she has the depth to carry this character, hopefully beyond this, uh, this, first, pa this first movie. Ben Feldman we found in Los Angeles, uh, same thing, you know, we read tons and tons of people. We wanted someone who is really likable and can be funny and you believe is really smart and he's all of those things. And, uh, and uh, you know, he and Scarlett have a history together and, and there's something like really funny and touching about their, you know, their history and, you know, you can only uh, imagine, uh, you know, Ben's character, George, uh, George's friend saying like, oh, not her again. Like, don't go back to her. Like, she's trouble. Um, and yet uh, he just can't help himself. He's got to, you know, he'll follow her into anything. He's just, you know, helplessly in love with her. And, uh, 
And when you see the movie, you, you get it. You get why he, he could be allured by her. When something's scary, you know, it definitely taps into your fight or flight. And it's fun if you can take flight out of that equation. Like, you have no flight. And flight is not an option, you know. Um, if these characters could just run away, they would all just run away and the movie would end, you know. And, and taking flight out, um, it forces the characters to face those things they fear. And, you know, seal, sort of sealing the entrances forces the characters into a situation where they... they can't avoid their fears. They have to go head on with them. When you actually go down into the catacombs, like you feel like just in your body, like just something feels different. Like the air isn't moving. The, you know, the sounds are different. Like things don't echo, but voice carries for hundreds of yards. Like it's just, everything feels different. And you feel like you're in a kind of a, you know, alternate nightmare verse, you know, and, and so I think, you know, we didn't have any uh, kind of ghost thing, like cameras moving without us, but, but you, you were aware that you were in a place that was very different than anything you had ever been in before, like the whole shoot.